At the beginning of August, it is the hottest time of the year, most of the students are still enjoying the summer vacation, but the third middle school is already lively. Today is the start of the third school year. According to the practice of previous years, senior high school students will start school one month earlier. Cheng Yin was standing at the door of the classroom with her school bag on her back, playing with the ends of her hair hanging on her chest. It's already 4.30 in the afternoon, and there is still the last class, but they don't have to go to class. The school has arranged a parent-teacher meeting today. Many parents came early and entered the classroom as soon as the bell rang, and their children went to the playground to play or go to the canteen for snacks. Cheng Yin is waiting for her brother to hold a parent-teacher meeting. This year, my parents have been transferred to other places for a year, and they can't make it back, so the task of holding a parent-teacher meeting falls on her brother. Your brother hasn't come yet. Xia Ying brought her grandmother into the classroom and came out to find Cheng Yin. The two are good best friends, the kind who have to go to the toilet together well, it should be soon. Cheng Yin said, wait a little longer. Xia Ying accompanied Cheng Yin at the door and waited together. By the way, you know, we're going to have a transfer student in our class this semester. Hey! Cheng Yin asked, is it still a transfer in senior year? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Xia Ying pointed to the classroom, we're the only one in our class, and transfer students should be your table mates. Cheng Yin has no interest in transfer students now, and is full of the storm after the parent-teacher meeting. She took out her phone, found her brother's number, and hesitated again. She did poorly in the final exam last semester. Today, the teacher will hand out all the exam papers. If his brother sees it, he will definitely be scolded. Either forget it. If his brother forgets or arrives late, the teacher will not blame her. What's wrong? Xia Ying urged, it's about to start. The more Xia Ying urged, the more nervous Cheng Yin became. She simply turned around and walked in the other direction. The teaching building of Number 3 Middle School has two exits, one is the stairs that ordinary students usually take, and the other is connected to the office building. Cheng Yin walked to the office building, and then went out through the stairs of the office building. This way she won't meet her brother. She walked slowly by herself. Although school is not over yet, due to the parent-teacher meeting, the school gate is wide open, and the security guards will not stop students who want to go home early. Cheng Yin left the school smoothly, estimating the end of the parent meeting. The head teacher is a talker, no matter how short it is, it will take two hours. Then Cheng Yin felt that such a wonderful time should not be wasted and should go shopping in the food street. So Cheng Yin took a special ditty taxi and waited on the side of the road as the driver arrived in a few minutes. She was bored, took out her mobile phone and swiped Weibo, but after a while she was attracted by the movement on the side. Someone is fighting. Two boys in number three middle school uniform fought. Students gathered to watch in a few minutes, but no one went up to pull the rack. One of the boys was still carrying a basketball bag, and he was pushed to the ground while playing, and the basketball rolled out. Maybe it was too embarrassing to be pushed in front of so many people. It's a pity that people are angry and can't be accurate. The crowd exclaimed. Everyone's eyes followed the basketball, and then saw it hit a passing boy who was talking on the phone, straight at his head. Although he is tall, with broad shoulders and long legs, he does not look strong. The strength of 17 or 18-year-old boys should not be underestimated. However, in the next second, the boy frowned, raised a hand, and smashed the basketball that came over with his forearm. The basketball flew towards the grass faster than before. His other hand was still on the phone without moving. This time, the power contrast is obvious. The boy hit the ball, but as if nothing happened, he glanced at the two perpetrators with a hint of impatience, and then continued talking on the phone and left. That one glance made the boy sit on the ground and forget to get up. The people present were stunned for a moment, and their attention was still on that person for a long time. Cheng Yin's eyes were also glued to him, 
watching him walk in his direction. When the two passed by, the boy glanced at Cheng Yin inadvertently, his eyes only stopped for a moment, and then walked past her towards the gate of number 3 middle school. Psychologists' research shows that when humans see people who are similar to themselves, the area of the brain responsible for understanding people's emotions will become sensitive, and it is easy to have an empathic effect on this role. Cheng Yin doesn't understand psychology, she understands her blushing at this time as the other party is really good looking. Although they only looked at each other for a moment, Cheng Yin remembered his eyebrows. But when he looked at the boy on the ground, a few glances, but his eyes are very aggressive. It makes people imagine what kind of arrogant person should be under this white skin. Cheng Yin subconsciously wanted to take a second look, but when she turned around, the boy had already walked into number three middle school. Three middle schools. Cheng Yin was sure that she had never seen such a person before. No matter what age girls are, boys who are the same on the outside always have a little taste. If a boy who is tall and can be described as beautiful has an innate arrogance, he must be the focus of attention wherever he is. If he was a boy from number three middle school, his reputation would have spread long ago. But Cheng Yin has never heard of it. Thinking of this, Cheng Yin was a little lost. This should be a relative of a certain student, who is just here for a parent-teacher meeting today. At this moment, Cheng Yin's cell phone rang, it was a call from the driver of the special car. Hello, I've reached where you're targeting. Okay, I'll be right here. Cheng Yin took one last look at the school, turned and walked towards the special car. Chen Ran? Are you listening to me? On the other end of the phone, Ji Huijin was chattering. Chen Ran walked into the third middle school, looked up and saw a certain building crowded with people, so he lifted his foot and walked in. What's wrong? What happened to you just now? Chen Ran didn't want to mention it, he paused, and then said jokingly, I just saw a girl at the door of number three middle school. Ji Huijin smiled on the other end of the phone, girl? What's wrong? What kind of girl deserves your special mention? Thinking of the girl just now, Chen Ran chuckled lightly, a high school student who looks a bit like me. Hearing such content, Ji Huijin lost interest in an instant, are you going to go on a self-driving tour on weekends? You used to be in the national team and never went out to play with us. This time, it was a coincidence. Living with him for two days at Zingyi Lake, Watching the stars and the moon at night, isn't the waves romantic? No. Chen Ran said, I'm going to study. Read? What? Chen Ran said, come back to high school, senior year. The other end of the phone was silent for two seconds, then burst into laughter. Chen Ran hung up without waiting for the other party to continue BB. At this time, he had reached the door of the classroom of class 5 of senior 3. The parent-teacher meeting has not yet started, and there are many students standing at the door. When they see him coming, their eyes are naturally attracted and they all look at him. Chen Ran is a person who is used to paying attention. He didn't care, he pushed open the back door of the classroom, only to see that all the parents were sitting inside. The only vacancies are the two tables in the last row. One table is full of books and stationery, the other table is empty, and there is no owner at first glance. Chen Ran sat down and looked at the classroom again. He was supposed to report this morning, but on the way, he passed the downtown area, the speed dropped to 30 yards, and he moved like a tortoise. As a result, he rubbed against an old man, and was logically corrupted. This matter is dealt with. It is past four o'clock in the afternoon, and the school is about to close. However, on the first day of the report, why should I show up at the head teacher, so Chen Ran still came to school. I just didn't expect a parent meeting at the moment. At this time, a Mediterranean man walked in full of energy. Hello parents, I'm Zhang Yuehe, the head teacher and language teacher of the seventh class. Please be quiet for a while we will start the meeting now. The whole class was quiet, and all the parents looked at the teacher on the podium respectfully. 
Zhang Yuehe cleared his throat and asked the monitor to hand out the exam papers from last semester. The first one was Cheng Yin's test paper, and the monitor came directly to the back row. When he saw Chen Ran, the face was really similar to Cheng Yin, so he tacitly agreed that this was Cheng Yin's brother. So the monitor put the test paper in front of Chen Ran and turned away. Chen Ran didn't even look at it, he put the test paper aside, but accidentally knocked over Cheng Yin's pen holder. He stretched out his hand to help and picked up a pen with a cherry ball doll on it. Then a pen with a pink fur ball. There is also a pen studded with rhinestones. Chen Ran glanced at the scores on the test paper next to him. Oh, the results are not good, but the equipment is quite fancy. At this time, a gust of wind came in by the window, blew Cheng Yin's test paper, swayed in the air, and finally landed in front of Chen Ran again impartially. Chen Ran lowered his eyes and glanced casually. The composition page, the first line, neatly written in graceful font My idol Chen Ran Chen Ran squinted. Oh? He looked down. My idol, Chen Ran, is a fencer. At the age of 13, he won the national championship of the junior group, the Asian Games at the age of 17, and the World Cup champion at the age of 19. In 2008, he missed the semi-finals of the championship and was silent for a long time. When everyone thought he would fall down, he appeared again in the public eye, won the championship in one fell swoop, and everyone said he was a genius. Chen Ran looked down at a glance, and the corners of his mouth rose slightly. I didn't expect to meet a small fan here. However, seeing the next paragraph, Chen Ran frowned and had a bad premonition. But Einstein said that success is 1% talent and 99% perspiration. Friend, this is what Edison said. Chen Ran then looked down. When Chen Ran was 10 years old, his family went bankrupt and he couldn't afford the expensive cost of fencing practice. But he didn't give up and didn't degenerate. He got up at 5 every morning to sell steamed buns, and went back after training at night. The night market set up a street stall and finally raised enough to study the cost. Chen Ran, I don't know how I sold buns and set up a street stall. Further down, it's even more incredible. Chen Ran works hard, but genius may always be bumpy, just as Han Jian is easy to be jealous of, Chen Ran was hit by a car accident and broke both legs. Chen Ran's eyelids jumped, and the healthy legs under the desk were inexplicably painful. I don't know if the weather is changing too fast and I have rheumatism. He was helpless, confused, disappointed, and hated. But he never gave up. He finally managed to stand up through daily high-intensity reconstruction, even taking care of him doctors also said it was a miracle. Chen Ran, hi. A flower blooms because of the spring breeze, a leaf is dyed red because of the autumn. Flowers and plants may still be changed by the outside world, but the real spirit is pure and unstained, never due to external forces. And change. Just as Chen Ran never gave up sports because of his disability, even if he was ridiculed for being lame, he could stand up again, run, and prove to the world that he could. Chen Ran. The author has something to say Chen Ran, I can't. But if you click on favorites and leave a message, I can do anything, and I can also ask Kierrieo to send you red envelopes. Chen Ran took a look at the name of the test paper. Cheng Yin, the high school student who tampered with his history, he remembered. After the parent-teacher meeting, the parents did not leave in a hurry, and gathered at the podium to communicate with the head teacher one by one. Chen Ran didn't leave and waited for a while to say hello to the head teacher. After half an hour, the classroom was empty. Zhang Yuehe packed up his things, put the pointer under his arm, and was about to walk out when he saw Chen Ran coming towards him in the corner of the classroom. Don't think too much, Zhang Yuehe almost always believes that this is Cheng Yin's brother. He put down the pointer, sighed and said, Your girl is really a headache. Chen Ran took a step and raised his eyebrows slightly, my girl. Zhang Yuehe continued without waiting for Chen Ran to approach, 
your sister is in the third year of high school, she should pay more attention to her grades. In fact, your girl is quite smart, but she is not steady in her studies. Habits are not cultivated. Chen Ran stood in front of Zhang Yuehe and said, Teacher, I am Chen Ran. Zhang Yuehe choked suddenly and looked at the person in front of him from top to bottom. How does this guy look so much like Cheng Yin? He looks like a brother and sister. Chen Ran? Are you here to report? Chen Ran nodded and confirmed again. Zhang Yuehe half opened his mouth and smiled awkwardly. There will be a transfer student in the class this semester, Zhang Yuehe, as the head teacher, must be the first to know. Athlete of the national team, world champion with outstanding achievements. Although Zhang Yuehe doesn't understand the sport of fencing, he also knows that it must be a genius. However, not long ago, Chen Ran was expelled from the national team. The news has not been released yet, but since they are going to get him to study, the school officials of number 3 middle school must be able to hide it. So, this transfer student is already 23 years old. Zhang Yuehe has taught high school all his life, and his students are from 15 to 18 years old. When he met such a 20-something, he really didn't know what to do. Uh, Chen Ran, right. Zhang Yuehe touched the edge of the desk with his fingers, looked at Chen Ran, suddenly remembered something, and asked, How are your legs doing? Chen Ran let out a low hum, and could not tell whether it was a sneer or an answer. Prosthetics After Cheng Yin was lying in the room and watching two episodes of anime, the sound of walking finally came from the living room. She immediately put down her phone, opened the textbook, and looked at it in a proper manner. After half an hour, there was no movement outside. Cheng Yin was restless and ran to the living room to take a look, Cheng Sheng was sitting on the sofa reading a scientific journal. No, this is not Cheng Sheng's style, how can she be so calm when she sees her test paper? Is it the calm before the storm? Cheng Yin retracted her head, intending to close the door unconsciously. Just a finger's distance away from the door, Cheng Sheng, who was sitting on the sofa, suddenly said, What's for dinner? Chengdu, she reopened the door and walked slowly to Cheng Sheng's side. Spicy pot. Cheng Sheng raised his head and gave an order to the ant in the kitchen. Cheng Yin's eyes rolled around, he didn't dare to stay on Cheng Sheng, he could only look at his reflection on the TV screen secretly, what did the parents say today? Cheng Sheng raised his eyes and turned to look at Cheng Yin. Oh, I didn't realize I was in the wrong class until the parent meeting was over. Chengdu, Cheng Sheng, hey, I remember you are in the seventh class, right? Cheng Yin, that was before the Division of Arts and Sciences. Cheng Sheng, oh. The O was calm, without the slightest guilt, and even a bit unreasonable and strong. Cheng Yin didn't know whether to rejoice or sigh. Cheng Sheng seemed to have the consciousness of being a big brother at this time, and added, I will go to your head teacher alone another day. What do you think? Cheng Yin, I don't think so. Although Cheng Yin doesn't think it's good, she knows that Cheng Sheng will definitely do what he says, it's just a matter of time. The next day, Cheng Yin arrived at school early. Xia Ying was a few minutes later than Cheng Yin, and ran to Cheng Yin as soon as she entered the classroom. I just saw Nail Household at the school gate again. He didn't pass the exam this year. There is a famous nail household in number 3 middle school. He has not been admitted for five consecutive years. He is very famous in number 3 middle school. Teachers often take him as a counter example in private. Unexpectedly, in the sixth year, he fell off the list again. Cheng Yin ignored Xie Ying and looked up to sort out the exam papers on the table. Mathematics, English, Chemistry, Biology, Physics. Where's my Chinese test paper? Cheng Yin asked, didn't it be handed out yesterday? Send it. Xia Ying turned around and found the language test paper on her desk to confirm, did you lose it? Look for it again. Cheng Yin bent over and turned over the drawer, no. 
This is the first time she has gotten a full score for the composition test paper, and she is waiting for the teacher to send it out so that she can take it back and frame it in the living room. Cheng Yin did not give up, and squatted down to look for it. The floor of the classroom was clean, and the shadow of the test paper was not seen, but she saw a pair of white sneakers slowly walking towards her. Cheng Yin raised her head, Sa Chen ran in front of her, and was stunned. It was the boy I saw yesterday afternoon. Chen Ran's eyes swept lightly on Cheng Yin's face. But having eyes on a boy's face can easily cause disaster. Chen Ran is obviously a special case, his outline is clear and full of heroic spirit, these eyes on his face inexplicably have a sense of balance long ago. At this time, someone in the classroom called out Cheng Yin. Hand in the math homework. Cheng Yin responded, picked up her homework and ran towards the class representative. Chen Ran glanced at her back. The little girl who tampered with his history was the one I met yesterday afternoon. And see him blush. Chen Ran walked to the seat next to Cheng Yin, pulled out the stool, and was about to sit down, when the little girl next to him asked in a low voice, Which one are you? Chen Ran. Why, he praised him at length in the composition, and even made up his sad and inspirational story, and turned around and didn't know him. The little girl's eyes widened, her face was slightly red, she looked extremely innocent, it really didn't look like a lie. Then there is only one answer, the little girl knew about him in other people's mouths or in news reports, but she didn't know what he looked like. Chen Ran sat down with a lower tone than Cheng Cheng who was standing. Cheng Yin heard the words and said in a low voice, Are you the transfer student? Chen Ran made a hum. Cheng Yin turned his head in surprise and was about to say something when the class bell rang suddenly. The classmates were quiet under the organization of the monitor, but most of the students were curious about this new classmate who suddenly appeared in the classroom. Especially the girls, looking back carefully, talking about the sound of fish in the pond, they are mixed, but they dare not cause large-scale fluctuations. Hormones in adult men Cheng Yin felt this hormone more deeply than other students. She was sitting next to Chen Ran, and the air around her seemed to be different, which made her feel a little nervous and a little cramped. What's your name? Cheng Yin asked. Chen Ran glanced at her, and was about to speak when Zhang Yuehe walked into the classroom with the textbook. He closed his mouth and looked at Zhang Yuehe, but felt the eyes of the girl beside him swirling around him. Chen Ran turned his head, Cheng Yin sat there again, not looking at him at all. Zhang Yuehe on the podium glanced at the classroom, his eyes fixed on Chen Ran. I should have asked him to come up and introduce himself, but when he thought of this person's deeds, he immediately retreated. It is true that he is a world champion, but he was expelled from the national team. Although the reason is unknown, the principal revealed that it was a matter of personal style, and he was not a good person. In this case, it is better to keep a low profile. So Zhang Yuehe simply set a new student on the podium, and asked everyone to open the textbook and start lecturing. One lesson is over. During get out of class, the students coming and going in the classroom couldn't help but look at Chen Ran who was sleeping, but didn't dare to speak up to disturb him. When the class just started, the small note was passed around the class. I heard that this new classmate is 23 years old. Xia Ying turned around several times, taking the opportunity to borrow the correction fluid for Cheng Yin, and quietly told her about it. It just so happened that the famous nail household in the third middle school passed by the window, Xia Ying and Cheng Yin both saw it, and they couldn't help but frown. It seems that this person is also a nail biter. Cheng Yin sighed. Hey. How can someone be so good-looking, why is his brain not so good? The squad leader Xie Changxin came over, stood beside Chen Ran, hesitated for a moment, and poked his arm. Student, when teacher Zhang tells you to do exercises between classes, go to the logistics office to get your school uniform. Chen Ran raised his head, sleepy eyes, nodded, Xie Changxin ran away immediately. Chen Ran pinched his sore neck and caught Cheng Yin's eyes quickly withdrawing from him. 
dodge like a thief. Chen Ran smiled and said, Classmate, lend me a pen. Cheng Yin did not speak, took out the Buling Buling pink water-based pen from the pen holder and put it on Chen Ran's table. Chen Ran took out a new book at random, spread out the first page, and wrote down his name. Chen Ran. Cheng Yin certainly caught a glimpse. She raised her head in surprise and said, I know someone with the same name as you. Chen Ran supported his head with one hand and lowered his face slightly, making Cheng Yin see his eyes lazily raised from this angle. What a coincidence! The inadvertent laziness in his eyes is very much like the male protagonist who sees through the routine of picking up a conversation on TV. Cheng Yin felt very uncomfortable. He didn't say anything just when he asked his name, and now he acts as if she was talking on purpose. So Cheng Yin immediately patched, Oh, but he is the world champion, not like you. There was a voice that sounded like a laugh but not a laugh. How come you're different from me? Cheng Yin said for a while, It's nothing, if you can't do it in a year, just another year, you can learn from your brother with the same name and surname, and they won't give up or fall. He looked at the back of Cheng Yin's head, her soft hair was combed into a simple ponytail with a strawberry ornament pinned to it. Thinking of yesterday's test paper, Chen Ran didn't know where the girl had the confidence to say such a thing. He raised his eyebrows and asked, How are you studying? Cheng Yin said warmly, All right, all right. Chen Ran snorted lightly and was heard by Cheng Yin. What? Cheng Yin said dissatisfiedly, do I have a scumbag face? Chen Ran looked at her sideways, and said casually, I thought most beautiful girls were not good at studying. A small group of anger was quenched in her heart, and she liked the subtext of this sentence. I'm actually okay, I'm a little worse than the study committee's grades. It's only 300 points. It is night. The doorbell rang, Chen Ran got up from the bed, glanced at the monitor and opened the door. Ji Huijin leaned against the door with a bag of beer and smiled. I came here to care about you, how is your high school life? Chen Ran ignored him and turned back. Ji Huijin changed his shoes and followed. Chen Ran sat on the sofa with his legs on the coffee table and the takeaway box beside his feet. Ji Huijin didn't bother to clean up, he swept the takeaway box aside, put on the beer he brought and handed Chen Ran a bottle. Chen Ran took it, holding a beer can in one hand and playing with his mobile phone in the other. Ji Huijin asked, Let's talk, what does it feel like to return to high school after five years? Do you think girls are very tender? Ji Huijin made up his mind and laughed. Chen Ran ignored him, put down the beer bottle, got up and went to the kitchen to get ice. Ji Huijin saw a test paper on the coffee table and reached for it. Yo, the third year of high school is different. It's the first day of school and you have to do the test paper. He didn't look carefully at the name on the side, and was about to turn to the back when Chen ran in the kitchen suddenly said, put it down. Ji Huijin looked up, what? In the blink of an eye, Chen ran had returned to Ji Huijin and took that kind of test paper. Don't touch my stuff. Ji Huijin was stunned for a while, but when she reacted, she was overjoyed. Chen Ran, don't think I didn't see it, you only got 82 in the Chinese test, and Chinese is still not your native language? When you were in high school but the first grade. Hey, I still can't forget the fear of being dominated by your total score. I didn't expect you to forget it very quickly. If our former teacher knew that you have failed the Chinese test now, I don't know if it will be would you be angry and drink two more bottles of Lao Bigainer. Chen Ran ignored him, put the test paper on the cabinet, saw the score on the head, recalled Cheng Yin's sentence it's okay, and I don't know who gave her the courage. The author has something to say Cheng Yin, harm. This person stole my test paper and scolded me for not being pushy. I'll just assume that you like me. Shake, harm. It's so difficult to want the babies to click on a favorite and leave a comment. Thanks for feeding the Bawang ticket or the little angel of irrigation nutrient solution thanks to the little angel who threw the deep water torpedo, small pants, 
Lu Haran's little sweetheart one, thanks to the little angel who cast the rocket launcher, two beleaguered, one mint cat, director of the resource group of shuban.com, thanks to the little angel who threw the landmine, three little fans, one melted fool, thanks to the little angel who irrigated nutrient solution, 20 bottles. Director of the resource group of shuban.com, 10 bottles of dark hatred, 23257484 bottles, 1 bottle of noodles and su jing sing, thank you very much for your support, I will continue to work hard. In the night, Cheng Yin came out of the bath, just happened to meet Cheng Sheng going home. He was hanging out with friends, drinking, and his cheeks were a little red. Cheng Yin wiped her hair, walked to Cheng Sheng and stared at him. Cheng Sheng bypassed her and went to the living room to pour water. Cheng Yin followed and stared at him. What are you looking at? Cheng Sheng touched his face, is there something on my face? Cheng Yin said, brother, you are 23 years old, right? Cheng Sheng, yes. Cheng Yin asked again, is it born in a public hospital? Cheng Sheng, what's wrong? Nothing. Cheng Yin said to himself, I just wonder if you were born wrong. Cheng Sheng. Cheng Yin did not speak any more, turned and walked to the room. When I came back today, she felt that Cheng Sheng didn't look like her, but Chen Ran looked like her brother and sister. I can't really get it wrong. Cheng Sheng followed to the door of the room and grabbed Cheng Yin's wrist. Ian, what tricks are you playing? Cheng Yin ignored him, he added, Tomorrow I will go to study and hold a parent-teacher conference for you if I hear anything bad from your teacher. He smiled softly, I will be an only child in the future. You. Cheng Yin broke free from his hand and said angrily, You are so vicious. You just want to take over the property for yourself. The next morning, the whole three sessions of the course sounded anxiously. Cheng Sheng sent her a message saying that she was on her way to school, and Zhang Yuehe just missed the fourth class so she thought that Cheng Sheng had called to ask. August is hot and rainy. It was dark and dark, and there was a feeling of wind and rain coming. The English teacher was listening, Cheng Yin had something hanging in his heart, and it was rare that he was not hypnotized. But she slept soundly at the same table. The closer to the end of get out of class, the more nervous Cheng Yin became. This year, Cheng's father and Cheng's mother have been transferred to work, so they are basically away from home, so the job of taking care of Cheng Yin falls to Cheng Sheng, who is a graduate student in the local area. Of course, the pocket money given to Cheng Yin is also given to Cheng Sheng first, and then he will send it to Cheng Yin on time. Cheng Sheng now controls the economic lifeline of Cheng Yin. Cheng Yin was anxious for a whole class, changing the grades on the test paper, and sighing again. The English teacher finally couldn't stand it any longer, and shouted with a black face, Cheng Yin. Cheng Yin subconsciously stood up and looked at the English teacher in horror. All sound clearly why Microsoft has a talon. The English teacher asked, you answer, why is the predicate verb in this sentence before the subject? Cheng Yin opened her mouth and looked at the blackboard with a confused expression. What is this? The English teacher knew that she couldn't answer, so she couldn't suppress her cold words. I'm in the third year of high school and still don't know what to do. I think you want to see me next September, right? No no no. Cheng Yin hurriedly said, Teacher, I don't want to see you. After a brief silence, a burst of laughter broke out in the classroom. Cheng Yin realized that her mouth was sloppy, and said, No, no. I didn't mean that, teacher, I like you. The English teacher has lost her temper. Cheng Yin is a girl, how can I say, she is good looking, well behaved and has a very sweet mouth. I often see her and praise her with a smile, but she doesn't pay attention to her studies. The English teacher sighed, sit down. When Cheng Yin sat down, she found that Chen Ran woke up at an unknown time and was staring at her. Anyone who is only a little worse than the study committee can have questions. I was thinking about something and didn't hear what the teacher said. Really? 
Chen Ran asked in a low voice, What do you think? At this time, Cheng Yin saw Cheng Sheng coming out of Zhang Yuehe's office through the window. Although it was raining outside, she could feel the anger on Cheng Sheng. It's over. Cheng Yin's heartbeat suddenly accelerated, and when she looked back and saw Chen Ran's half squinted eyes, her heartbeat almost reached the limit. How could these two men actually make her heart beat faster? Seeing that Cheng Yin didn't speak, but his face was flushed, Chen Ran became excited and said, Tell me, maybe I can help. Cheng Yin felt like she had met a savior. Cheng Sheng is 23 and Chen Ran is 23. Cheng Sheng is a good student and gentle, but Chen Ran doesn't look like a good student. Since ancient times, Good students have never been able to fight bad students. She was silent and said in a low voice, Classmate, since we are all at the same table, can you cover me? Chen Ran tilted his head, his tone was light, but his expression was serious. How to cover? At this time, the school bell rang. In the last class in the morning, all the students in the class were hungry and ran to the cafeteria one by one like hungry wolves. In such a noisy environment, Chen Ran looked at Cheng Yin quietly, and said calmly, You can't fight, I broke both legs, and it didn't take long for me to recover. No fight, no fight. The second half of the composition was made by Cheng Yin on the spot during the final exam last semester, she had long forgotten what she had written. It's just someone looking for trouble for me in a while, can you call me away for an excuse? If he doesn't let me go, can you force me away? As soon as the voice fell, a cold voice sounded from the back door of the classroom. Cheng Yin, come out. Cheng Yin trembled, stood up tremblingly, and walked out. It's over. She gave Chen Ran a look, but Chen Ran sat peacefully without any intention to act. Okay. How could she believe that a person who has not passed the college entrance examination for five years can cover her? When she got to the door, Cheng Yin gave a flattering smile, Brother, it's raining outside, haven't you been in the rain? Don't catch a cold when you look back. Cheng Sheng pursed his lips and turned to the corner of the corridor with anger. Come with me. Cheng Yin lowered his head and followed Cheng Sheng to a corner where no one was around. Yes. Cheng Yin, I took the test 366, the number is quite auspicious. Cheng Yin whispered, it's 376. Cheng Yin's words completely ignited Cheng Sheng's anger. You're quite proud, aren't you? You can't read and study, art has no cells, practice fencing for three days, fish for three days, and nets for two days, do you not know anything else but to eat, drink and have fun? As long as you put some thought into your studies, you won't get such a score even if you think with your toes. When Cheng Sheng said this, he did not expect that several students would pass by, and they were all heard. They looked back at Cheng Yin one step at a time. Although Cheng Yin is not good at studying, she is quite famous in the third middle school for her appearance. When someone stared at me like this, my eyes immediately turned red. Cheng Sheng didn't want to scold his sister in front of others, it was just an accident. But Cheng Yin would not be considerate of her brother at this time, she just felt extremely wronged. Yes, yes, I'm not as smart as you, but I can't do anything well. Cheng Yin cried and said, then I just don't understand what the teacher is talking about. Words I can't remember it, and I can't push the formula. Whoever asks parents to give you the IQ level alone. Cheng Sheng originally thought about it, but hearing Cheng Yin retorted like this, his anger rekindled. Have you never found a reason from yourself? How come I have a sister like you, and I can't tell that no one else believes that we are biological? I found it. I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm not worthy of being your sister. Cheng Sheng laughed in anger you can be your sister if you like. At this moment, Chen Ran came out of the classroom. Cheng Yin heard footsteps and thought another classmate was coming. As soon as he saw Chen Ran, he immediately walked towards him. Brother. Chen Ran took a step. Cheng Yin wiped away tears, 
hid behind Chen Ran in three or two steps, and looked at Cheng Sheng. Even if you want to kill me today, you have to step over my brother's body first. Cheng Sheng. Chen Ran, hey. Cheng Sheng suddenly became quiet. The moment he saw Chen Ran, he touched his face, and even really began to wonder if Cheng Yin had found his biological brother. What's even more irritating is that Cheng Yin pulled Chen Ran's sleeve and said eagerly, This is the person who wants to trouble me, brother. Chen Ran smiled and put Cheng Yin behind her, and said, Brother, my girl is still young, don't worry about her. Cheng Sheng, your girl? Your home? Yes, now I really don't recognize my six relatives. Cheng Sheng only treats Chen Ran as a high school student and doesn't bother to care about him. Turning his head and taking two steps, Cheng Sheng saw that the rain was getting heavier and heavier, and turned around and threw the umbrella in his hand to Cheng Yin. Cheng Yin, do it yourself. Cheng Sheng's figure disappeared in the corner of the building, Chen Ran Kei asked, Is this the one who is looking for trouble for you? Cheng Yin nodded, Yes. Chen Ran looked at the umbrella in her hand, and already understood that the little girl used him as a shield. Little girl, are you kidding me? His voice was a bit teasing, and the tail sound fell gently, making Cheng Yin both guilty and blushing. She rolled her eyes and deliberately pulled the topic off. You said your legs were broken today, what's the matter? Chen Ran looked at the rainy day outside the corridor and said casually, car accident. The little girl just cried, and her voice was soft and soft. So miserable? So have you recovered now? Chen Ran wanted to stop at this point, but when she looked down and saw her looking at her legs, she was as sad as the Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva. It's a miracle. Cheng Yin doesn't even remember what she wrote for the homework she made up a week ago, where can she remember the exam papers from last semester, does that affect your normal life? Chen Ran leaned against the wall, hiding in the shadows, Cheng Yin couldn't see his narrow smile. It doesn't matter, I can run and jump, maybe I can go to the Olympics. The next second, Cheng Yin looked up at him in disgust. You can wake up, let's take the college entrance exam first. Chen Ran, Cheng Yin felt that she had unintentionally poked someone's sore spot, killing the chatter, so she bluntly changed the subject. Aren't you going to eat in the cafeteria? Chen Ran looked downstairs lazily, it was raining, everyone was holding an umbrella, it seemed more crowded. No, go home and eat. Cheng Yin was about to ask the question, but she still won't come in the afternoon. But she felt that if she asked this question, Chen Ran would feel that she seemed to be looking forward to him coming to class. It happened that Xia Ying had been waiting impatiently, and stood at the door of the classroom and looked around. So Cheng Yin only stuffed the umbrella to Chen Ran. Then be careful on your way home. Chen Ran didn't have time to return the umbrella to her, and saw the little girl running away. Chen Ran went downstairs and looked up, the rain was really heavy. He opened the umbrella and hurried out of the school. Chen Ran parked his car in a clearing outside the school when he came in the morning. This is not yet developed and many people park here temporarily. This many people also includes Cheng Sheng. Cheng Sheng just got out of the car and stopped at the traffic light when he saw a familiar person, holding a familiar umbrella, walking slowly past his car. Cheng Sheng, it's over, it's going to rain, my sister is going to get married. The author has something to say I wish everyone a healthy dragon boat festival and eat salty zongzi. If you shake it, you won't eat it. I just watched a few episodes of the new Shaha, and I have a little shadow on the Zongzi, smiley face. Oh yes, explain two things. It was originally said that Cheng Yin was Fu Guir's younger sister, but later it was written that he found that his brother had a lot of roles, so you shook your hand to cover the sky and decided to temporarily change roles. There is also why Warren went to high school because he was expelled and did not take the college entrance examination, so no school wanted him, but I guess Zongzi is very happy to accept him, smiley face, okay, the last thing, send a red envelope today, 
Red Duck. Thank you to the little angel who voted for the king or irrigated the nutrient solution for me thanks to the little angel who cast the rocket launcher, one director of the resource group of shuban.com, thanks to the little angel who irrigated nutrient solution, 20 bottles of mint cat, 16 bottles of spring and autumn dream, 3 bottles of lemon yakult, thank you very much for your support, I will continue to work hard. Cheng Yin gave Chen Ran the umbrella and could only squeeze an umbrella with Xia Ying. The two little girls walked towards the cafeteria. What did you just tell Chen Ran? Cheng Yin shook his head, it's nothing, gossiping. Accompanied by the sound of rain, Xia Ying said. Have you noticed that there are a lot of girls passing by our class today? Of course, Cheng Yin noticed this before Xia Ying. It's just that she has been worrying about her financial security all morning and has no intention of thinking about anything else. Xia Ying mentioned it at this moment, and Cheng Yin responded, Is it to see Chen Ran? Tisk tisk, the news really spreads fast. Cheng Yin asked, What happened to the nail household? I don't like people with bad brains, no matter how good looking they are. Xia Ying is a top student. From the first year of high school to the present, no matter the big or small test, she will always be ranked first in her grade, so she said this with great confidence. Learning is not good for people who do not deserve my liking. Cheng Yin cut. You are as perverted as my brother. Chen Ran did not come to class in the afternoon. After school, the rain has stopped. Cheng Yin returned home slowly, as soon as he opened the door. He saw Cheng Sheng sitting in the living room with a book in hand. Cheng Yin clenched her tail as a human being, quietly passed through the living room, and walked towards the room. Just as she touched the door handle, the man in the living room said, Yo, who's this girl? Cheng Du, she turned around slowly, thinking about how to speak, Cheng Sheng said again, Did you go to the wrong house? This is the Cheng family, only my son. Who are you looking for? Cheng Yin walked to Cheng Sheng with his head down and neck down. Brother. Who is your brother? Cheng Sheng closed the book, didn't you recognize someone as your brother today? Cheng Yin, that's not what you forced me to do. Cheng Sheng rolled the book and tapped Cheng Yin's head lightly. Who is that boy today? Cheng Yin covered her forehead and asked, which one? Cheng said, it's the one you recognized as your brother. Cheng Yin muttered, What is a thief or not, that's my table mate. Same table. Cheng Sheng narrowed his eyes, capturing Cheng Yin's expression, just the same table. Cheng Yin was silent for a while, then looked up at Cheng Sheng, You think he's just like my brother, right? Cheng Sheng, going to do my homework, I'll check after dinner. Cheng Yin walked away. Speaking of which, she was a little surprised. Cheng Sheng was so angry at school today, she thought she would be scolded at home today, and she would deduct half of her pocket money no matter how bad it was. Unexpectedly, Cheng Sheng was thunderous and rainy, and he didn't have many attacks. The other book, Cheng Sheng watched Cheng Yin close the door, and then spread out the book in his hand. Educational experts talk about middle school students' puppy love. What do you think? How to do? School is dismissed one class early on Friday, and most students are ready to go out to play. When Cheng Yin and Xia Ying were packing their school bags, Xia Chong Xin came over with three movie tickets. Cheng, Cheng Yin, Xia Ying, do you want to go to the movies? It's free. Cheng Yin and Xia Ying shook their heads at the same time. No, we're going shopping. Xie Chong Xin put away the movie ticket, said oh, and left. Cheng Yin thinks about it carefully, it seems to be true. Well, what about that? What do you think of him? Xie Ying said. Cheng Yin couldn't help thinking, not so much. Hey. A few points, it's pretty awesome. Cheng Yin had goosebumps when she heard the score. It's because his grades are so good. His actions and demeanor are so similar to my brother, every time I see him, I think of my brother, so scary. Hey, true or false? Really, 
especially the way they read books, it's almost the same. Xia Ying looked at Cheng Yin with disgust, you are so strange, the advantages of others have turned into disadvantages in your eyes. You're not surprised, then why don't you like him? Cheng Yin asked rhetorically. Xia Ying spread her hands, because his grades are not as good as mine. Cheng Du, well, she couldn't argue with that. The two chatted without a word, walked out of the school, and took the bus to the city center. Friday evening was very lively, Cheng Yin and Xia Ying carried school bags and went straight to the food street. The wide streets are filled with various scents, and the flashing neon lights dazzle pedestrians. Cheng Yin and Xia Ying often come here, and every time they go to the innermost place to eat spicy hot pot. Halfway through, Xia Ying suddenly pulled Cheng Yin. Ian, do you think the one in front is Chen Ran? Cheng Yin stopped and saw Chen Ran at the door of the hot pot restaurant in front of her. With his back to Cheng Yin, he turned his head to talk to a woman of the same age beside him, both of whom had a cigarette in their hands. This wisp of white smoke made Chen Ran look a little unreal in this place full of fireworks. Cheng Yin is cliched to describe, like a banished immortal falling into the mortal world. But this man was wearing a white t-shirt and black jeans, and he stopped there, but it blended perfectly with the bustling street. Cheng Yin was very confused and didn't know why he had such a deep memory of the picture in front of him. After a long time, she realized that all the illusory and real feelings generated at this moment were because she had not yet explored the world of adults. Chen Ran is a person from two worlds. In a flash, Chen Ran saw Cheng Yin. The two looked at each other and moved. Cheng Yin walked towards Chen Ran, Chen Ran lost the cigarette and stepped on it. Chen Ran. Cheng Yin glanced at him and whispered. The girl next to Chen Ran was instantly happy. Classmate? Classmate Chen Ran. Chen Ran glanced at her, then looked down at Cheng Yin. You called me brother two days ago, but now you're a classmate again. Cheng Yin blushed instantly. The name brother is often called Cheng Sheng at home. But when it came to Chen Ran, it wasn't like that. Brother. Cheng Yin cried. Chen Ran responded quickly, the girl next to her laughed even more, and Cheng Yin was even more cramped. She really didn't understand what was funny. At this time, a group of people came out of the hot pot restaurant, both men and women. Ji Huijin looked at Chen Ran, then at Cheng Yin, and asked, Do you know him? Chen Ran said calmly, My sister. Ji Huijin looked at Cheng Yin's face carefully. Hey? Is it true? Why haven't I seen your sister before? Chen Ran smiled again. Just recognized my ancestors. When Chen Ran said this, everyone knew that he was joking, and he burst into laughter, and a few others played Chu Yin and Xia Ying together. Xia Ying felt uncomfortable and took Cheng Yin away without even saying hello. Chen Ran and the others naturally didn't care about the two little girls and fled, and walked out idly. Who? She's still in school uniform, it seems to be from number three middle school. Ji Huijin suddenly thought of something, is it your classmate? He deliberately emphasized the word classmate, which made others stare at Chen Ran like a joke. Chen Ran shrugged, default. Everyone laughed at this topic, Chen Ran was used to it. When his mother asked him to go back to the university again, all the friends had taken turns to laugh at him. After laughing, Ji Huijin said again, but don't tell me, that little girl just looked a lot like you. Yeah, I was surprised when I first saw it. Chen Ran touched his chin, could it be that my dad gave birth to another one later? Don't, it would be a pity if they were really brothers and sisters. Ji Huijin looked back at the direction where Cheng Yin and Xia Ying left, what a beautiful girl, there are so many people in the world, but you two you look so similar. What does this mean? It means you are married. Tisk. Chen Ran said dissatisfiedly, they are still underage, what are you talking about? Ji Huijin snorted, I'm sorry, I haven't dealt with underage girls for a long time. But it's really good looking. 
when I grow up, it's worth it. Chen Ran bowed his head and replied to the WeChat message, but did not answer Ji Huijin's words. The girl who just smoked with Chen Ran chatted with Ji Huijin. Don't think too simple about today's high school students. Today's children know everything and are very courageous. That's right. Ji Huijin said, if you say that people are underage here, maybe they already miss you in Xiao. Chen Ran quickly pressed the keyboard of the mobile phone, but did not drop the words of others. Come on, that girl looks like my own brother and sister. If I really have something to do with her in the future, I can't do anything like incest. The author has something to say the flag is here today. Huo Ran, you must not be a little girl in the future come on today, 100 red envelopes, leave a message, love you, shake. Saturday morning fencing lesson. Cheng Yin was sitting in the car, listless, playing hatch. I really can't figure out why she still goes to the club. It is said that three years old look old, Cheng Yin is not a material for learning since childhood, her parents did not expect her to be admitted to a good university by herself, but hope to cultivate an art, even if she is not qualified, she can cultivate her temperament. I learned the piano, but I was complained by the neighbors that I almost moved. Art has also been explored, but the teacher euphemistically informed the parents that the child's talent may no longer be drawn when she saw that she was drawing shadows with a ruler. Until she entered junior high school, Cheng's father and Cheng's mother finally gave up on art, and heard from colleagues that relatives and sons had entered Ivy League colleges with excellent fencing skills, so they immediately sent Cheng Yin. Fencing Club in the beginning, Cheng's father and Cheng's mother also took turns to accompany the children to study every day. But over the years, Cheng Yin's best results were only 48th in the club league and 79th in the city individual competition. With such achievements, let alone ivy, melon, and vegetable vines can't climb. My parents may be tired or they may have given up. Later, Cheng Yin's frequency of going to clubs decreased a little bit. When she was in the second year of high school, she basically went to the club two or three times a week. Now she is in the third year of high school. Once a week. Cheng Sheng stopped the car and tapped Cheng Yin's forehead. Go in by yourself, don't be lazy, I'll pick you up at noon. Cheng Yin got out of the car with his bag on his back and said nothing. Because Cheng Sheng drove her personally, it was nearly twenty minutes earlier than before. In the coach's locker room, two male coaches just came out after changing their clothes. Do you know why Chen Ran didn't participate in this tournament? A bearded coach said in a low voice, My senior brother said that according to internal information, he seems to have been expelled from the national team. The other coach's eyes widened and his mouth pouted like a goldfish, I was fired? Really? What's the reason? I don't know. The bearded coach said, my brother also heard from others, but the specific reason has not been disclosed. The two sighed for a while, and when they passed the lounge, the bearded man saw Cheng Yin from a distance and waved to her. Ian, so early today. This bearded man is Cheng Yin's coach, and he is also the hero of Cheng Yin's ability to write that amazing composition. I always talk about Chen Ran in Cheng Yin's ear hoping that his students will follow Chen Ran as an example. Someone like Cheng Yin, whose left ear goes into his right ear, has never even watched a match of Chen Ran, so he can count Chen Ran's results in detail. As for the others, it is Cheng Yin's own artistic processing. Cheng Yin sat on the high stool, dangling her legs, and said, Teacher, you are very handsome today. The bearded man smiled, so early today. Well, my brother sent it to me, what did you guys just talk about? It's nothing. The bearded man sat next to Cheng Yin, took out two boxes of milk from his bag, inserted a straw and handed a bottle to her, are you tired in high school? Cheng Yin bit the straw and nodded, I'm very tired. The bearded man also drank the milk and said, have you made progress in your studies? Cheng Yin's face changed slightly, and he avoided answering. I got a perfect score for my composition at the end of last semester. That's great. Show me. 
Cheng Yin frowned, I lost the test paper. The bearded man laughed, Cheng Yin said dissatisfiedly, don't believe it, the title is my idol, I wrote Chen Ran. The bearded man almost spit out his milk, what did you write about him? Didn't you always say that he is very powerful? Cheng Yin said, I used him as an example to write a composition, and what the teacher said was very inspirational and very good. Beard. You dare to write if you have seen a game, and I said that you are a bit of a poisonous girl. As soon as you write, you will be expelled from the national team. Cheng Yin added, by the way, there is a new classmate in our class, also called Chen Ran, do you think it's a coincidence? The bearded man scratched his head, this name is quite common. Yes, people with the same name and surname, why is there such a big difference? Cheng Yin lowered his head and looked at his legs, he is a world champion, he is a nail biter, or a smoker and drinker the nail house. Beard doesn't really want to chat with Cheng Yin. She does this every time. When she comes to class, she chats up and down, and says what she thinks. Don't think Beard doesn't know, she just wants to stall for time. Okay, let's go to class. Two weeks later, Cheng Yin has begun to get used to the life of the senior year. In order to squeeze more time to review, the teacher races against time to teach new lessons, and the homework assigned every day is piled up into a hill. Cheng Yin gradually felt powerless. Although she hasn't used much force. In contrast, Chen Ran, Cheng Yin's desk mate, seems to be on vacation. He shows up in the classroom every morning and disappears within three classes. And he almost slept in those three classes. Except for Zhang Yuehe, he would give some face and pretend to listen to the class. Cheng Yin finds it strange that the serious and responsible teachers in their class never speak of Chen Ran, as if he doesn't exist. After thinking about it, Cheng Yin also thinks it can be understood. If she was a teacher, she would not care if she encountered a nail-biting household like Chen Ran with such a poor attitude towards learning. At noon that day, Cheng Yin watched Chen Ran wake up from his sleep, rubbed his shoulders, and then got up and left the classroom. As everyone knows, Chen Ran has finished his study for today. Cheng Yin looked at his back and sighed, just like him, he won't be able to go to college even if my child can play soy sauce. Xia Ying turned around and said with disgust, you have time to worry about others here, why don't you worry about yourself, the exam is next week, have you memorized your vocabulary? Will the conic section be done? Do the chemical formulas match? Chengdu, speaking of this monthly test, the teachers pay more attention to it, and the inspection is the content of the new class during this period. After this monthly exam, the senior year will fully enter a round of review. Xia Ying doesn't have the habit of reviewing before exams, but seeing the monthly exam tomorrow, Cheng Yin didn't even know where to turn the textbook, so she kindly gave her a list of exam contents, which is accurate to which formula and which word is to be tested. Cheng Yin was amazed at the brain structure of the of learning, and at the same time did not forget to help the world. She glanced at her sleeping roommate, took out a scrap paper, and carefully transcribed it. But Chen Ran slept too soundly, Cheng Yin was embarrassed to wake him up, and this man was tall and occupied the table as soon as he lay down on the table. Cheng Yin looked left and right, and finally slipped the paper into Chen Ran's bag. She cleared her throat took out the Chinese textbook and started reading early. A few minutes later, a girl walked into the classroom with a book in hand, and looked around. Immediately, her eyes were fixed on Chen Ran, and she walked over firmly. It's over, it's over, this is a student from the school inspection office. Because the third year of high school started half a month early, the school did not manage the school rules and discipline. But this week, the school officially started, and various inspections began one after another. The person who came over was the person who inspected the school uniform. Cheng Yin didn't dare to make a big move, so she could only pat Chen Ran's thigh quietly, but the man slept like a dead pig and didn't respond at all. Classmates It was too late, the girl had already stood in front of Chen Ran, 
raised her chin, and tapped Chen Ran's desk with the tip of her pen, classmate, wake up. Cheng Yin silently lights up Chen Ran. The people in the supervision department are notoriously disrespectful of their six relatives. But Chen Ran still didn't respond. The girl became impatient and looked at Cheng Yin, what's his name? Brother, I'm sorry. His name is Cheng. Before the word sound was uttered, Chen Ran suddenly raised his head, his eyes were half open, his eyes swept across Cheng Yin's face, and finally looked at the girl in the supervision department. What's wrong? The girl's face turned red at a speed visible to the naked eye. You, why aren't you wearing a school uniform? Chen Ran said, I don't have my size, tell me to wait for the next batch. The girl nodded and spread the book in front of him. Then register your name. Chen Ran took the pen, turned around his fingertips, and asked with a smile, Is it my fault? The girl was unable to speak for a while, Chen Ran lowered her head and wrote her name, then returned the book to her. The girl took the book and left, Cheng Yin looked at her back, was very angry, and couldn't help snorting. The last time she was caught late at the school gate, she was not so good at talking. Suddenly, Cheng Yin was knocked on the forehead. She glared at Chen Ran, what? Chen Ran slept well and is in good spirits. My surname is Chen, the front nasal, not the back nasal. How did you learn Chinese? Cheng Yin disdainfully said, I have got full marks in the composition no matter how bad my Chinese is, how about you? Have you scored 40 in the composition? Chen Ran shook his head, that's not true. But I have been used as a material for a perfect essay. Cheng Yin ignored Chen Ran, picked up the book and read it, looking like a full-time scholar. In the last few minutes of the morning reading class, the students were tired from reading, and the voices in the classroom gradually became quieter. At this moment, a boy in the front row of the classroom suddenly lay on the table and screamed. Immediately afterwards, the surrounding students gathered around. Cheng Yin looked up and saw that Chu Qi was in an accident. She stood up hurriedly, what's the matter? What's wrong with Chu Kijhen? Xia Ying craned her neck and looked forward, are you sick? Cheng Yin ran to the front row immediately, kicking Chen Ran's stool in a panic. Sick? What's wrong? Where is it? Is it serious? Chen Ran raised his head and squinted at the movement in front of him. Cheng Yin was like an ant on a hot pot, squatting next to Chu Kijhen to ask questions, but she was not active at the same table. Chen Ran patted Xia Ying's stool. Xia Ying looked back and asked, What's wrong? Chen Ran pointed to Chu Kijhen, Cheng Yin's boyfriend. Xia Ying shook her head, Ah? No? Impossible? They don't know each other well. Chen Ran frowned slightly, Secret love. Xia Ying, then I don't know. Chu Qi was being helped out by a few boys, and Cheng Yin followed behind. Chen Ran looked at her eagerly, got up, and followed out. What are you doing? You are still in class. Xia Ying turned around and said, The teacher is coming soon. Chen Ran didn't turn her head back, Xia Ying turned back in a whisper. Outside the classroom, when Xia Chang Xing saw Cheng Yin following, he turned around and said, Cheng Yin, go back, he has acute appendicitis. We have to take him to the hospital, so it is useless for you to follow. Cheng Yin stopped and asked, Then, will you go back to school then? Xie Chong Xing and the others went downstairs and said, I'm not sure, surgery may be required. Although Cheng Yin didn't follow him, his heart was still attached to Chu Kijhen. She called to them, Church, you must be well. Chu Kijhen, who was suffering from illness, was moved, and felt that his stomach didn't hurt as much. Immediately afterwards, the man behind shouted again, You must come back for the exam tomorrow. Otherwise, I will be the last. I beg you. Chu Kijhen. I thank you. The figures of several boys disappeared completely in the stairwell, Cheng Yin didn't want to go back to the classroom, and sat on the steps, 
holding her face in worry. What should I do? Chu Kichun seems to be very ill. If he doesn't come to the exam tomorrow, Cheng Yin will be finished. Cheng Yin was so worried, she didn't notice someone standing behind her. What are you thinking about? Chen Ran leaned against the wall and looked down at Cheng Yin. Cheng Yin sighed and said nothing. I can't hide it. When the results of this monthly test come out, Chen Ran will definitely know what her true level is. I don't care if I don't process the sound. Compared with face, life is more important. Seeing that she didn't speak, Chen Ran squatted down and said in a low voice, afraid that you won't be the last if he doesn't come to the exam. Chengdu, speak when you speak, what are you doing so close, what are you doing in such a low voice, you can't speak well. Cheng Yin suddenly turned her back to Chen Ran. Chen Ran could only see Cheng Yin's reddish cheeks from this angle. He heard it anyway, and Cheng Yin didn't plan to keep it. My brother and I promised to fight for three and two in the next exam. Strive to improve one place and reach the third to last achievement. It's really not good, it's okay to keep the second to last. What if it wasn't done? Cheng Yin's voice became lower and lower, and she also brought a cry. I am the only one in our village who went to high school. My brother dropped out of school to work for me to study. Will you give me something to eat? Chen Ran, knowing that Cheng Yin was selling badly, Chen Ran glanced at her watch and didn't want to continue to be her audience, so she turned around and left. Cheng Yin looked at his back and suddenly remembered something. Although it doesn't seem very good to say that, she did forget that there is a character named Chen Ran. That's a nail-biter who hasn't even been admitted to a university for five years. Brother. Don't go. Cheng Yin suddenly stopped Chen Ran, tears welling up in her eyes, and looked at him eagerly. Didn't you recognize me as your sister? Chen Ran, the two stared at each other in silence for a long time, Cheng Yin conveyed a feeling of if you don't help me, you will kill your relatives. Chen Ran felt that the situation would be out of his control if things went on like this, so he walked away. However, only the first leg was pulled, and the second leg was dragged. Cheng Yin sat on the steps, hugged his calf and looked at him pitifully. Chen Ran, he pumped his legs, the little girl was quite strong. Let go. I won't let go. Cheng Yin said with more force, you said it yourself. I recognize my ancestors and return to my ancestors. Chen Ran, Cheng Yin, I called you brother, do you have the heart to watch me go home and be beaten? Tell Chen Ran about this matter, don't look at other people's little girls and make fun of them at a young age, they will be retributed. What can Chen Ran do? He can't say to a little girl under the age of 18, I don't care, I just want to do better than you. After some secret discussions, Chen Ran really never dreamed that he would make such a promise one day. You promise? I. Guarantee. Guarantee. Chen Ran walked to the parking lot, and when he reached for the key, he took out a folded note in his bag. He unfolded slowly, and the graceful font on it was familiar. A whole exam focus, neat and clean. It seems to be written very seriously but Chen Ran always feels that something is wrong. Getting into the car and starting the engine, Chen Ran K suddenly remembered that the root-seeking formula on the exam key point didn't even write the root number. At this level, we are still fighting for three guarantees and two. Don't give up. The author has something to say Yin Mei, you're the last one in the exam OK MM I beg you. Huo Ran this kind of thing can still be coquettish it's still a hundred red envelopes, don't save me money. She unexpectedly returned to 17 Ji Ran never imagined that Shen Ji, the number one male in the investment banking circle I was so fierce when I was young until one day, Ji Ran passed by the stairs, a group of middle-aged two teenagers were bragging about their excitement. Only a boy said excitedly, if you are looking for a girlfriend, you should look for someone like Ji Ran with a thin waist and long legs. In the end, before he could speak, Shen Ji raised his foot and kicked over, with a cold face, what the are you dreaming about? He didn't say a word, 
and I didn't catch up. S. Moth. But the test scores are not very good. Cheng Yin is such a person. The exam at 9 o'clock still starts early reading at 7.30, but the teacher does not have class, so students are allowed to review by themselves. In the quiet classroom, others are racing against time to check for omissions, and Cheng Yin is confirming over and over again that his exam equipment is not complete. After confirming the equipment, she began to worry about why her table mate hadn't come yet. It's 8 o'clock, so he shouldn't come directly. Cheng Yin waited nervously until half past 8, when Chen Ran finally walked in slowly from the back door of the classroom. Cheng Yin took a deep breath. After Chen Ran sat down, he looked left and right, the first thing was to ask Cheng Yin to borrow a pen for the exam. Cheng Yin is more at ease. Look, this kind of person who doesn't even bring a pen will definitely sit at the bottom of the class. Cheng Yin took out all the best pens in the pen bag and gave them to Chen Ran. Come on. After she finished speaking, she felt wrong again. If Chen Ran worked hard, she would be the last one. So Cheng Yin frowned again and said, you better stop cheering. Chen Ran, with that said, Cheng Yin felt a little troubled by her conscience. It's been five years since they took the exam and they haven't been admitted to the university yet. She is still here hoping that they will be the last in the exam. Although that is his real level, Cheng Yin still feels that she is a bit vicious. In order to restore her image, Cheng Yin decided to give Chen Ran some chicken soup. By the way, do you know Chen Ran? Cheng Yin asked, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about a fencer with the same name as you. Chen Ran held his head and looked at Cheng Yin. Don't know. Cheng Yin said, he won the national championship at the age of 13. Chen Ran lifted his eyelids, is it so powerful? Cheng Yin added, 17 years old is the Asian champion. Chen Ran, wow. Cheng Yin, I won the world championship in two years. Chen Ran, awesome. Cheng Yin, right, you also think he's awesome, right? You see you have the same name and surname, but your life situations are vastly different, but you have to believe that there must be something special about you. Contact, maybe you are just like him, but the talent is not in learning. Chen Ran turned the pen and asked. How do you know that his talent is not in study? Cheng Yin widened her eyes and said, I'll just say it casually, if he is good at studying, then you who have the same name and surname as him are still alive. Chen Ran touched his chin and wanted to say that he was still alive, but before he could speak, Cheng Yin poured a big bowl of chicken soup down again. So even if you pass the bottom of the exam this time, don't be discouraged, maybe you are talented elsewhere. Just when Chen Ran was speechless, Xia Ying couldn't listen anymore, turned to Cheng Yin and said, I beg you to worry about yourself, no matter how bad your grades are, you can take the test. It has been five years, and the pig should have learned the conic section five times, how can it be the last one in the test? Chen Ran, no, two sisters, should I take the exam or not? If you don't take the last one, what should I do if the little girl is crying so hard? The last one in the test, then listen, did Sieswiba say human words? You try to teach the pig five conic sections, and I will call it Sieran after it learns. The seats of the third middle school exam are arranged according to the grades, Chen Ran's grades are blank, and he is arranged in a classroom in the experimental building. Chen Ran didn't know where that classroom was but he knew it was right to follow Cheng Yin. Sure enough, after trailing Cheng Yin into an exam, he found his exam number in the far corner. He looked up at Cheng Yin, OK, in the front row, it's not too difficult. After a while, other candidates came one after another. Sheik. Chen Ran would lie down on the seat to sleep as soon as he sat down, but was awakened by a burst of laughter from the boys. He raised his head and looked directly at Cheng Yin in the front row. She was surrounded by several boys, the tallest one had his hands in front of her and was talking to her, Cheng Yin lowered his head and didn't respond, but his face was red. 
the boy laughed in a serious manner and wore a peaked cap on his head. At this time, the invigilator came in, and several boys around Cheng Yin dispersed, but the peaked cap was sitting behind Cheng Yin. The teacher sorted out the test papers expressionlessly on the podium, and the people under the stage kept making small movements, some playing cheat sheets, and some playing with mobile phones. The cap sat like an uncle, staring at the back of Cheng Yin's head. Chen Ran changed his posture and leaned against the wall, staring at the peaked cap. From his angle, he could just see the cape smiling evilly, then stretched his legs and kicked Cheng Yin's stool. Cheng Yin looked back at him, and he spread his hands. After Cheng Yin turned back, the cap kicked again. Chen Ran was tired of seeing it so many times. Just as Ji Huijin's WeChat came in. I heard that you took the monthly exam today. Chen Ran did not reply. Ji Huai diligently expressed his mockery. How do you feel about the exam? You must come back and tell us how your high school life is now, is it the same as we were back then? After Ji Huijin sent this message, she never thought that Chen Ran would get back to him. He came to see the joke on purpose. When Chen Ran saw the news, he smiled, picked up his phone casually, took a picture of the cap kicking Chen Jian's stool, and sent it to Ji Huijin. Look, this is the flirtation of high school students today, and the routine has not improved. The video was successfully sent, Chen Ran turned the pen twice, looked up, and the cap began to play with Cheng Yin's ponytail. Cheng Yin stomped her feet in anger, but the cap laughed instead. The pen suddenly fell, Chen Ran didn't pick it up, but got up and walked towards the cap. The peaked cap was teasing Cheng Yin very much at the moment, and a shadow suddenly appeared behind him. He was pressed on the back of his head. ADHD, right, you try again. Who the are you? The cap jumped up and swung a punch at Chen Ran, but was dodged. Dong Zheng, what are you doing? The invigilator suddenly slammed the table, do you know this is an exam? This cap is called Dong Zheng, and he has always been a frequent visitor to the political and educational office. Compared with other things, the invigilator didn't want to care about him when he saw that he was teasing his female classmates. But now that someone has come forward, the teacher naturally can no longer turn a blind eye. The invigilator waved his hand, go back to my seat. The test papers are sent. Dong Zheng. What about you? If you harass your classmates again, go to the political and educational office to write a review for me. Cheng Yin dared to be angry just now, but there is someone here to support her, she started to hold back her tears, and looked at the invigilator like weeping. He was so shocked that he couldn't even care about Chen Ran's affairs. Fortunately, Chen Ran hadn't left yet. He turned around and pressed Cheng Yin back to his seat. Good exam. Stop acting. Cheng Yin changed his face in seconds, lowered his head, and touched his cheek lightly. Oh, I see. After the math test in the afternoon, I have to take a self-study class before school. As soon as Xie Ying returned to the classroom, she turned out the textbook, turned back and said to Cheng Yin, I will say that this solid geometry is the original problem, you see, I found it, it is the example problem in the book. Hey! Cheng Yin hurriedly took the textbook to read, it's really the original question, I don't have any impression at all. Xia Ying was speechless and asked Chen Ran, have you made it? Cheng Yin looked at Chen Ran nervously. Chen Ran glanced at Cheng Yin and said calmly, no. As soon as the voice fell, Xia Ying let it go, and even Cheng Yin looked at Chen Ran with a look of the pig should learn it five times. Chen Ran, fuck. The classroom is noisy, everyone's books are in the lockers, and now they are moving books to the desks. Suddenly, the back door of the classroom was kicked open, the movement was so loud that the whole classroom was silent for a few seconds, and everyone looked at the back door. Dong Zheng took his two or three little brothers and stood at the door, arrogant. There are whispers around. Why is Dong Zheng here? He looks so scary. Who messed with him? Our class and their class have been keeping the water from the river. 
Are you here looking for trouble? Who are you looking for? It seems that the visitor is not good, and someone in our class will suffer. Cheng Yin knew what was going on, Dong Zheng brought people here so aggressively, it must be because Chen Ran pressed the back of his head in the examination room in the morning. Sure enough, Dong Zheng pointed at Chen Ran and said coldly, You, don't leave after school. Listen, what a familiar opening. The classroom was quieter, except for Xia Ying, almost everyone looked back at Chen Ran. Chen Ran and Dong Zheng looked at each other, everyone could see the sword drawn, swords and swords, golden drums sounded in their ears, and bullets flashed in front of them. While everyone was waiting to see how Chen Ran would take on the battle, they saw him put his head on his other hand and his eyelids lightly lifted. And hit a big hatch. At this time, the class can no longer be described as quiet. Only Xia Ying took out the Chinese book with a snap and opened it, and began to read the text aloud, the old man talks about the teenage madness, the left is the yellow, the right is the blue. Chen Ran and Xia Ying's double contempt skills completely angered Dong Zheng, he was about to rush in when he was irritable, but was dragged out by his younger brothers. Here comes the political and religious office. Run. They have just smoked cigarettes, and if they are smelled by the director of the political and religious office, they will definitely be forced to spend another afternoon. Grass. Dong Zheng turned his head and gave Chen Ran a middle finger, you wait for Lao Tzu. As soon as Dong Zheng and the others left, the director of the political and educational office walked to the door of class 5 with his hands behind his back. Standing by the window and glanced at it, seeing that the students were all reading in an orderly manner, and then went to the next class with satisfaction, when the others left, Cheng Yin covered her face with the book and asked Chen Ran, What should I do? What to do? Are you learning to walk? No. Cheng Yin was stupid, she grabbed Chen Ran's sleeve, sighed deeply, and said, Don't fight them hard, they are domineering in school, fighting all day long, the teacher can't control it, the students are afraid of them. Chen Ran stood up lazily and tapped Cheng Yin's head lightly. When did you see me stay until school? After he finished speaking, he turned and walked towards the back door. Back against the light, relaxed and comfortable, like visiting a vegetable market. It seems that he really didn't take this group of high school students into his eyes, and was too lazy to care. From the first year of high school to the third year of high school, Cheng Yin heard a lot of things about Dong Zheng, she was really afraid of what they would do to Chen Ran, after all, Chen Ran was weak. Unlike Dong Zheng they have a bunch of scumbags, and I heard that they have contacts with people in society. Last year, they forced a boy from the first year of high school to drop out of school. Cheng Yin felt that she was the one who implicated Chen Ran, and now she was thinking about how to help Chen Ran. Tell the teacher is definitely not acceptable, 99% of the boys will not want the teacher to know about this kind of thing. It is even more impossible to call the police. After thinking about it, Cheng Yin decided to use the Huero policy to negotiate with Dong Zheng. Cheng Yin told Xia Ying what she thought, and received a blank eye from the other party. Did you not see that Chen Ran has already run away? As long as Chen Ran runs fast enough, he will never be beaten. Cheng Yin said, even if Chen Ran is a dog, he can't run like this every day. Why can't you? You see that Xiao Huang at the guard's office is all right chasing the principal's car every day. Why are you all right? Xiao Huang has lost weight, haven't you noticed? Chen Ran is so tall and not thin, you just let him run. The last part of the debate about dogs was interrupted by Xia Ying's roommate Nai Nan. Nai Nan felt that if he listened to it, he would think that Chen Ran was just a dog. Xia Ying felt that Cheng Yin was completely unreasonable and did not know what she was trying to do as a little girl. Cheng Yin is usually the most annoying when others say that Dong Zheng likes her. Although this is a well-known thing in the three middle schools, she just feels ashamed. Why are you talking about this? My roommate is going to be beaten for helping me, so I can't help. If you can't handle yourself, then go, you really think you can protect Chen Ran. 
Cheng Yin was a little angry, put on her school bag and left. Dong Zheng and his get out of class 9 were upstairs, and Cheng Yin stepped on the bell to their classroom door. This is the first time Cheng Yin has voluntarily appeared in the 9th class. Most of the people in this class know Cheng Yin. Brother Zheng, Chen Jian is looking for you. Cheng Yin rolled his eyes silently. Dong Zheng came out soon, he was still wearing his peaked cap, leaning against the door frame, and looked at Cheng Yin dazedly. What are you looking for from me? Many people in class 9 were watching the fun, Cheng Yin felt uncomfortable, so he walked to the corner of the corridor. Dong Zheng naturally followed. When they got to the stairwell, there was basically no one, so Cheng Yin said, Are you asking Chen Ran to trouble you because of today's exam? Dong Zheng raised his chin and did not answer her question, Why, are you here to intercede? I'm not here to intercede. Seeing that he was getting closer and closer to him, Cheng Yin took a step back subconsciously, I'm here to reason with you. Oh, I'm unreasonable. Then how can you let Chen Ran go? You care about him so much? What's the relationship between the two of you? He's my classmate, shouldn't I? Really? Dong Zheng glanced up and down at Cheng Yin, then if you become my girlfriend, I will promise you. Cheng Yin was stunned, is there no other option? No. Cheng Yin did not answer for a while. Dong Zheng approached her slowly, have you considered it? Cheng Yin nodded. I thought about it. Just when Dong Zheng was about to reach out and embrace Cheng Yin in his arms, she suddenly took a step away, turned and went downstairs. Don't slap people in the face. Dong Zheng. Is it that way? Wait. Cheng Yin turned around and said impatiently, Why? Dong Zheng pointed to her school bag, Did you bring an umbrella? At this time, Cheng Yin noticed that it was raining lightly outside. In the early autumn, most people did not hold umbrellas on the road. Dong Zheng didn't wait for Cheng Yin's answer, so he looked back into the classroom. Fuck. They usually come to class without a school bag, so how can they bring an umbrella? Here. Dong Zheng suddenly stepped forward, took off his hat and buckled it on Cheng Yin's head. Not waiting for Cheng Yin to respond, he waved to his brothers again, Go, fight. Cheng Yin snorted. Everyone ran away, what are you doing? Dong Zheng and the others went upstairs to fight, Cheng Yin clicked three steps and took two steps downstairs to go home, but when she turned a corner, she saw Chen Ranyeo leaning against the wall and standing beside the stairs. Hearing footsteps, he raised his head and met Shang Cheng Yin's gaze. Cheng Du, how did you come back? Chen Ran looked at her and said lightly, I'll come back and get my wallet. What about your wallet? Chen Ran chose to remain silent. How the do you answer this? Did I tell you that I came back to find my wallet, but I heard Xia Ying said you were going to negotiate with Dong Zheng, and then I was afraid that you would be beaten, so I ran to you without even taking my wallet, only to hear that you told Dong Zheng not to slap me in the face? Chen Ran glanced at the peaked cap on her head, and felt that the little girl had a lot of backbone, and she was unambiguous when she sacrificed others for herself. He smiled and asked, Would you rather be beaten than be someone's girlfriend? Holy shit, I heard it. The best answer to this tough question is to throw it at the other person. Then you would rather let me be someone's girlfriend than be beaten. A man knows how to answer, you know what I mean? Chen Ran stood up straight, leaned over to Cheng Yin, and said in a low voice, Little girl, don't try to trick me. I won't be beaten. He suddenly raised his hand and took off the cap on Cheng Yin's head, I won't let you be someone else's girlfriend. 100 red packets today. Chen Ran was going upstairs with a peaked cap, Cheng Yin followed behind him. You're not leaving yet? Dong Zheng and the others are blocking you. Chen Ran made an O and continued to walk up. Cheng Yin grabbed the hem of his clothes and said, They're really not easy to mess with, the teacher doesn't bother to care about them, they'll kill you. Chen Ran stopped and looked back at Cheng Yin. 
Have you seen Animal World? Cheng Yin nodded, See, what's wrong? Chen Ran said, I see a few of them, just like watching monkeys fight, do you understand? Cheng Yin was shocked. She really hasn't seen such a pretentious person for a long time. However, when they arrived at the door of the classroom, they did not see Dong Zheng and the others. According to the people in the class, Dong Zheng and the others left without finding Chen Ran. Cheng Yin breathed a sigh of relief, watching Chen Ran take the wallet and casually throw the peaked cap on the locker at the back before going back at ease. But two days later, during the breakout time, Cheng Yin had just returned to the classroom and hadn't sat down when she heard a movement outside. Dong Zheng came with people again. Cheng Yin subconsciously stood in front of Chen Ran's desk and shouted to them, What are you doing? The classroom is monitored. Dong Zheng touched his neck, and said coolly and madly, This is between me and him, Cheng Yin, you step aside. Cheng Yin raised her head and said with justice, I don't. Chen Ran also looked at Dong Zheng, stretched his muscles and bones and leaned on the back of the chair, as if he wanted to eat soft rice, and was ready to bend his legs. Dong Zheng, Cheng Yin, get out of the way. Cheng Yin, I don't. Dong Zheng, get out of the way. Cheng Yin, I don't. Dong Zheng couldn't think of Cheng Yin, so he said, Chen Ran, come out if you are a man. Cheng Yin, he is not. Chen Ran. No, I finally know which leg I broke. You let it go. Chen Ran wants to go out and prove that he is a man go to the men's toilet to excrete excess fluid in the body. Cheng Yin stopped him. Don't be stubborn, you can't reason with this kind of person, the teacher will come to class soon, don't panic. No, I. Enough. In the quiet classroom, Xia Ying suddenly roared, and everyone looked at her. Xia Ying slammed the book on the desk and looked out the door, are you annoying? Every day is like a dogskin plaster, which affects my study. Can you be responsible? Fuck. What a big tone. Before Dong Zheng could speak, he Lizzie, who was next to him, pointed at Xia Ying and scolded, Why don't you just study, you are amazing. You think I'm just good at studying. Xia Ying stood up and pointed at them and scolded them back, Do you want me to beat you all to know that I am both civil and military? Fuck. Holy shit. Cheng Yin wanted to kneel down, but she actually met two persecutors within 24 hours. He Lizzie was so angry that he couldn't say anything, he pulled Dong Zheng's hand and said, Boss, do it, do you do it. Dong Zheng waved his hand, Don't think that I don't beat women, let me get her out. All of a sudden, the people from class 5 who were watching the fun rushed up to block Dong Zheng and the others. Bullying Chen Ran is nothing, but bullying Xia Ying is not enough, that is the person who raises the average score of the whole class by himself, so he has to be protected. There was a lot of noise at the door, and the initiator Chen Ran sat comfortably in his seat, his expression really like watching a play. Looking at him like that, Cheng Yin believed him and said that watching them like watching monkeys fight was not pretending. He is really not afraid but it is more likely because he has not seen the world. At this time, I don't know who yelled the director of the political and educational office is here. Dong Zheng quickly analyzed the situation in his mind. Zhen Han Mao, it is estimated that the principal will be the first to fight with him. Forget it, I can't be bothered, so I put down the harsh words and ran away with someone. Half a minute later, it was Zhang Yuehe. He hurried into the classroom and scolded, I heard your voices in the playground. Where does it look like in high school? Do you want me to set up a stage for you to sing? The classroom was suddenly silent, Xia Chong Sing sat in the front row, walked over to Zhang Yuehe and muttered a few words, Zhang Yuehe's face became even worse when he heard it. These little bastards! He slammed the door and walked towards class 9, looking very angry. Knowing that Zhang Yuehe went to discuss the argument, the whole fifth class was uneasy. Who doesn't know if they provoke Dong Zheng, don't even think about mixing in the school, even if they don't beat people, 
there are various ways to force you to die. Chen Ran forget it, it is Xia Ying who offends them today. At this moment, Xia Ying is eating the buns and reading the jokes in the back of the magazine, and there is no worry on her face. Xia Ying, what should I do? Cheng Yin began to worry about Xia Ying again, you offended them today, will they retaliate? Xia Ying didn't bother to look back, and sneered, I can't cure them yet. Cheng Yin wanted to persuade her not to pretend, she turned around and stuffed a piece of bread into Cheng Yin's mouth. You need to worry about yourself first, the results will come out in a while. I just finished the test yesterday, but because it is a monthly test, the system is relatively loose, and the teachers began to mark the papers when they were invigilating the test, so the results were released this morning. As they were talking, Zhang Yuehe came back. He didn't say anything else, he asked the monitor to take everyone to do the test paper, and then asked Chen Ran to go to the office with him. When Chen Ran got up, Cheng Yin whispered take care. The last one in the exam, and he provokes the group of people in the ninth class, he must not eat well. Chen Ran snorted coldly and went directly to the office. Zhang Yuehe was waiting for Chen Ran in the office with the transcript. When he saw him coming, he first sighed and then waved to him. Sit. Chen Ran sat upright with a respectful expression. Although there may be some personal humiliation later, Chen Ran is ready to listen. After all, Zhang Yuehe is a good teacher to him. Chen Ran understands well, that he will not be required to attend school full time. This is too difficult for him, so Zhang Yuehe will try his best to cater to Zhang Yuehe in other aspects, no matter if he arrives late or leaves early, and will never cause him trouble. For example, if this exam hadn't been for Cheng Yejin in the middle, Chen Ran would have done it seriously. Write a few words, such as solution, such as can be known from the title, and then write a few universal formulas. Chen Ran, I'm still very proud of your transfer to my class, no matter what you've been through, you're an ordinary high school student now, and the most important thing is to study. Zhang Yuehe wiped the sweat that didn't exist on his face, I learned from my conversation with the principal that your grades in high school were still very good. Chen Ran was silent. But now that you have decided to come back to the university, you still have to show your attitude. Look at your results this time, it is really beyond my expectations, I see you he is also quite smart, although he has graduated from high school for many years, but he is not like this. Chen Ran's mind is now full of Xia Ying's phrase pig learn five times. My day. I really paid too much for this cheap sister. You can learn the pig five times, know your mother. Although Chen Ran travels all over the place, Zhang Yuehe is still trying to educate. A lot of pressure, next time, let's improve to five places? It doesn't sound good if you look at the second to last. Chen Ran, okay. I got it, wait, teacher, where do you think I am last? Zhang Yuehe was still surprised when he thought about this guy, didn't he feel a little nervous about what his test paper looked like? The penultimate, the second, what's up? Chen Ran, who is the last one? Zhang Yuehe is not happy. You can't just think about being worse than yourself, you have to look forward, I think you are sitting behind Xie Ying, right? Don't be too embarrassed, lad, that girl studies well, you usually learn more from her. Chen Ran turned a deaf ear, the last one is Cheng Yin. Zhang Yuehe, yeah, alas, this girl is really. Chen Ran couldn't hear what Zhang Yuehe said behind. Fuck. I worked so hard to get to the bottom of the exam. This is really worse than a pig. Actually, Cheng Yin wasn't so bad in the exam. But in the first exam that day, Chen Ran suddenly did something to save the beauty, which made her completely absent-minded. In addition to Dong Zheng's troubles, the invigilator stood in front of him for the entire exam in order to let him live in peace. It is next to Cheng Yin. The invigilator was standing next to the exam. The effect was like a shot of adrenaline. Except for people like Xie Ying, no one could do the question well. 
Most invigilators have the habit of watching students answer questions. Every time he glanced at Cheng Yin's test paper, Cheng Yin felt that he had done something wrong, and in the end she didn't even finish the composition. But Chen Ran didn't know the inside story, all he knew was that when the results came down, Cheng Yin must be sad and angry. It feels as if the girl was forced to marry a pig. You promised to help the girl escape from the marriage, and you also promised to find a handsome man to marry. When the raw rice is cooked, the girl lifts the hood to take a look. Hey, the groom is the same pig. This is a tragedy. And Zhang Yuehei talked to him for a class, during which Xie Changxing had come to the office to pick up the transcript and take it to the class to announce. Cheng Yin must know by now that she is married to a pig. Leaving the office, Chen Ran received a call from Ji Huijin. Zhang Yu invited guests to dinner tonight. He was promoted and made a hot pot. Chen Ran looked up at the sky, it was almost October, and the sun was still so hot. The person on the other end of the phone was still chattering, 6.30, Xia Longkan. We will play Mahjong in the afternoon, will you come? Ji Huijin and Zhang Yu are both junior high and high school classmates of Chen Ran, and they almost grew up together. At this age, most of them have started working like Zhang Yu, or opened their own shops like Ji Huijin, and only a few are still studying. This minority includes Chen Ran. Okay. Chen Ran said, I'll come after school at noon. The last class in the morning is Zhang Yuehe, he will not slip. Ji Huijin was happy again, and Chen Ran hung up before he turned on the mocking mode. The classroom is very lively at the moment. Although most of the students are sitting in their seats, the discussions are one after another. Chen Ran walked to his seat and saw Cheng Yin lying on the table with his back to him. In this restless environment, Cheng Yin was a little strangely quiet. Chen Ran reached out and picked Cheng Yin's hair. Hello. Cheng Yin was motionless. Chen Ran bent over, supported the table, and patted her. Hello. Cheng Yin still does not move. Xia Ying turned her head and said, Don't bother her, she just got her grades, she's uncomfortable. Xia Ying's roommate, Nai Nan, is a sports committee member. She is not good at words. She has gradually come into contact with Chen Ran in the past few days, so that she can naturally participate in their topics. Nai Nan turned around and returned the red pen to Cheng Yin, and said, Don't be sad, the new class is taught very fast during this time, it's normal that you didn't absorb it, try harder next time for the exam. Well. Cheng Yin finally had a little reaction, and his little head moved. Nai Nan added, You don't care too much about the ranking. You see, although you are last in the exam, your room for improvement is the greatest. Chengdu, Xia Ying bumped him with her arm, don't lift the pot without opening it. Nai Nan knew that he made a mistake, but he didn't know how to fix it, so he could only turn back angrily. This delay, the class bell rang, and Zhang Yuehe walked in with the textbook. Chen Ran sat down, dug out the Chinese book and placed it on the desk. The sunlight outside the window gradually shifted and hit Chen Ran. Chen Ran said, Cheng Yin, draw the curtains. Cheng Yin naturally did not respond. Looks very angry. Chen Ran looked at her lazily for a while, then leaned sideways and kicked Cheng Yin's stool quietly. If there is no response, he will kick a second time. Third, fourth. Cheng Yin was annoyed, dragged the stool to the side, and then burrowed down again. The girl's ponytail swayed gently in the sun. Chen Ran plucked her braids. Cheng Yin covered her head. Chen Ran plucked her braid again, finally igniting her anger. She raised her head, glared at Chen Ran, lowered her voice and said, ADHD, right? Do you try again? Hey! Chen Ran was very angry and funny, leaning back against the chair and leaning back, he stirred Cheng Yin's braid again. I moved, what can you do to me? Shameless. Rogue. The last class of the morning passed so awkwardly. Cheng Yin has been ignoring Chen Ran, and even she, 
who loves to whisper in class, didn't say a word. At noon, the students walked towards the cafeteria. Chen Ran naturally left the school, but he felt uncomfortable driving all the way. I can't say what's wrong. The moment he got downstairs, he suddenly turned the steering wheel and drove towards the school again. After half an hour, Chen Ran appeared in the classroom again. Nai Nan looked at Chen Ran and asked, Did you forget to take something? No. Xia Ying also turned around and asked, Then what are you doing here? Chen Ran sat down, pulled out a book and spread it in front of Xia Ying, I am a student, of course I came back to study. Hey! Xia Ying muttered as she turned around, People who are one point higher than Cheng Yin are quite enlightened. Chen Ran, he looked around, Cheng Yin was not there. After a while, Cheng Yin returned to the classroom with a can of strawberry milk. Today, her ponytail was a little high, swaying with her footsteps, her hair was golden, as if the sun was shining in her hair swing on the swing. However, the moment she saw Chen Ran, she immediately changed her face, didn't ask anything, and returned to her seat indifferently and lay down to sleep. Chen Ran looked at her indifferent look, thinking that she had suddenly lost a string in her mind and rushed back to sit in this broken classroom. And he sat all afternoon, even the teachers were shocked to see him. During this period, Ji Huijin kept calling and urging him, and he hung up Ji Huijin at least ten times. The end of summer is hot and dry, and the excavators at the nearby construction site are making a lot of noise. There are only three classes on Friday afternoon, and school will be over in less than five minutes. The people in the class are eager to move, and Cheng Yin has already started to pack his school bag. Chen Ranking's low voice suddenly sounded in his ears, OK, don't be angry, this time I made a mistake in my estimation. I didn't expect you to fail the 382 exam. Chen Ran even looked at Cheng Yin's score in the office, 308 yon, absolutely amazing. Cheng Yin paused, zipped up the zipper of her school bag, and looked at the blackboard angrily, placing her hands on the table, like a primary school student. I don't believe what I say, it's a shame I still protect you like that today. Chen Ran, at this time, the bell rang for the end of get out of class, and the teacher left without delaying the class. Chen Ran felt that his patience had reached the limit. He didn't say anything anymore, when he got up to leave, he felt Cheng Yin glared at him again. Hey, what's wrong with this little girl? Chen Ran suddenly turned around and pulled away the stool, bowed and looked at Cheng Yin. The shadow cast by the tall body easily covered Cheng Yin, although there was no physical contact, but the man's breath was close at hand, Cheng Yin felt a strange feeling and froze. What, what? Chen Ran said, little fellow at the same table, would you like to be reasonable? Do I owe you something? Cheng Yin was angry and aggrieved, but she did feel that she was unreasonable. But she is only 17 years old, and Chen Ran is 23 years old, so why ask her to be reasonable and not Chen Ran to be honest? So she turned her back to Chen Ran and continued to pack her school bag, whispering, I am the only one in our village who was admitted to high school, and my brother went to the construction site to move bricks before he finished junior high school. Just to save money for me to study, he eats a steamed bun every day, he works so hard, and he sees me coming last in the exam, he will definitely kill me. Chen Ran twitched the corners of his mouth, this time he is really leaving, he must not stay in this place any longer. Cheng Yin is still talking to herself. It doesn't matter if you kill me, my brother will definitely not give me food. I'm only 17 years old, and I'm still growing. It doesn't matter if you grow up or down. You come to school hungry every day, and no one will know if you faint on the road. I'm only 17 and it's so miserable. What did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong, you just did the wrong question. The phone in Chen Ran's bag kept ringing and Ji Huijin was urging him again. Cheng Yin passed by Chen Ran with her head down with her school bag on her back. And some people don't believe what they say, they don't say anything, they push me into the abyss, and they don't even have the slightest remorse. 
They even kicked my stool and pulled my braids. Chen Ran, it's okay, I'll give you food, okay? Chen Ran took her school bag and walked out, you can't starve to death. The author has something to say. Underscore dot. Chen Double Standard Dog, treat others with leniency and discipline others, only state officials are allowed to set fires, and people are not allowed to light lamps. Scumbag. Today is also a hundred red envelopes to thank the little angel who voted for me or irrigated nutrient solution the director of the resource group of Buknet threw a rocket launcher mint cat threw a shallow bomb chi shiu threw a rocket nana power, enough to throw one mine thanks to the little angel who irrigated nutrient solution, 20 bottles of liangpi moon cakes, 15 bottles of stools, thank you very much for your support, I will continue to work hard. When Chen Ran walked out of the school, the sun was exuding the last bit of prestige. It's so hot. The little ancestor at the back is still like a turtle, dawdling. Chen Ran turned around and said, hurry up. Cheng Yin made an O, oh, but did not speed up. She was a little nervous. How to say this feeling? She was really angry when she first got the transcript. Chen Ran's words are nothing. But she didn't expect Chen Ran to say that she would take her to dinner. Intellectually, Cheng Yin should be rejected. She doesn't seem to be very familiar with Chen Ran, and Chen Ran is an adult man, different from the group of boys in their class. Cheng Yin always felt that it was strange to follow him after school. But she was a little nervous and anticipating now. I don't know what Chen Ran will take her to eat. Will you take her to play again for dinner? Unconsciously, the two walked to the parking lot outside the school. Chen Ran took her to a car. Cheng Yin stared at the car and asked, You all drive to school. Chen Ran opened the driver's door, put his hand on it, and looked at Cheng Yin with a half smile. Yes, I'm afraid I'll take you to sell it in a while. Cheng Yin hummed, opened the co pilot's door, and sat in. The moment the engine started, Cheng Yin suddenly felt unreal. From childhood to adulthood, she has ridden in the car of her parents, the car of Chengsheng, and the car of her uncle and aunt. But not in a car of a peer. Chen Ran and she are not the same age, but she cannot classify him as an elder. The moment Chen Ran put one hand on the steering wheel, Cheng Yin realized very clearly that Chen Ran was indeed different from the little boys around her. Maturity and strangeness are both at this moment which makes something called hormone externalize. The 17-year-old girl has the desire to explore, but she doesn't dare to get too close, so she can only listen to the abnormal heartbeat by herself. Chen Ran was very quiet when driving and did not speak. Cheng Yin felt uncomfortable, so she took out her mobile phone and called Cheng Sheng. Brother, I won't come back for dinner today, I'm eating out with my classmates. Uh. It's Xia Ying, I told you about her. No, no, I'll come back after eating. Hmm, all right. Hang up the phone, Cheng Yin opened Xiaoxi Owl, but heard someone ask, Xia Ying. Cheng Yin raised her head and stuttered. What, what? Chen Ran stopped at the traffic light and looked sideways at Cheng Yin. What are you guilty of? After finishing speaking, Cheng Yin was speechless, but Chen Ran chuckled. What did he say to the little girl? This is too ambiguous. And think about it, if he is Cheng Yin's brother, he will definitely not worry about his sister going out to dinner with a man. I will take you home after dinner. Chen Ran said, please rest assured, I will not sell you. He muttered to himself, it's still growing, so it won't sell for much. Chengdu. Ji Huijin and the others had already gathered in the hot pot restaurant, waiting for Chen Ran to come and have dinner. Zhang Yu received Chen Ran's WeChat and was busy calling for someone to order. Boil the beef first, Chen Ran is already here, wait. Ji Huijin lit a cigarette lazily, glanced at everyone, and said, Hey, it's boring, every time you eat, there are a group of big men, you always bring some women, always Luhan Bureau how boring. Before he finished speaking, the door of the box was pushed open. Chen Ran stood at the door, staring at Ji Huijin. 
what are you doing at the door? Be the door god. Ji Huijin waved to him, come in quickly, I'll be waiting for you. Chen Ran ignored them and turned around to see Cheng Yin carrying a school bag, clutching the school bag her shoulders with both hands, pursing her lips tightly, her eyes flashing. Obviously heard what Ji Huijin said just now. Tisk, I just looked like every day in the classroom, but here I learned to be shy. What are you nervous about? Chen Ran whispered, People are talking about a woman, you are a girl, you are completely two creatures, understand. Cheng Yin made an O. Oh. Chen Ran turned back again, supported the door frame, glanced around, and said, Be careful when you speak. Everyone is a bit inexplicable, what is Chen Ran pretending to be? Immediately afterwards, Chen Ran walked in, followed by Cheng Yin. Everyone was stunned, but Ji Huijin was the first to react. Hey, Chen Ran, isn't this your sister? This table is not the same group that Cheng Yin met in the food street last time, and only Ji Huijin has seen her. Yes, come on, let me introduce you. Chen Ran stretched out his hand and fumbled behind Cheng Yin, my sister who lives abroad, I just recognized her. Chen Ran said this, Everyone at the table except Ji Huijin was a little confused. Listening to Chen Ran's tone, he was obviously joking, but looking at the little girl's appearance, it seemed that this statement was established again. When everyone's eyes swept over Cheng Yin and Chen Ran, Cheng Yin seemed timid and didn't say a word. She was actually nervous. It was the first time she had dinner with so many strangers, and they were all grown men. It seemed that she had no room to play. Chen Ran smiled, pulled the chair beside him, and said, Sit. After Cheng Yin sat down, Zhang Yu asked curiously, You really have a younger sister? Why haven't you heard of it before? Chen Ran stared at him, the meaning in his eyes was unclear, Ji Huijin couldn't help laughing and said, You idiot, this is Chen Ran's classmate, classmate. I didn't see him wearing a school uniform with his back what about the bag? Everyone understood and laughed. Cheng Yin doesn't understand, what's so funny? Chen Ran on the side was like an outsider, cocking his legs, leaning on the back chair and playing with his mobile phone. Ji Huijin sat opposite Cheng Yin, stretched his neck and asked, Sister, is Chen Ran good at school or not? Hearing this, Chen Ran glanced at Cheng Yin lightly. Cheng Yin understands that, she knows that she can eat people softly, of course she will say good things for Chen Ran. He's nice and obedient. As soon as these words came out, the people at the table burst into laughter, which was extremely exaggerated. Cheng Yin was stunned, what were they laughing at? Are adults laughing so low? Chen Ran suddenly put down the phone and stared at Cheng Yin. What's wrong? Did she really say something wrong? However, Chen Ran didn't say anything, just sighed and pushed the brown sugar glutinous rice cake in front of Cheng Yin. Speak less, eat more, and I will depend on me if I don't grow taller. After he finished speaking, he looked up and saw that three or four people were lighting cigarettes. You put out the cigarettes, and open the windows to dissipate the air. He paused, and said with a little self-deprecation, didn't you see my classmates here? Cheng Yin hurriedly said, No, no, you don't have to worry about me. In fact, she hates the smell of cigarettes. Cheng Sheng occasionally smokes at home. When she finds out, she will sue her parents. But now it's all men's dining table, it's a bit reluctant to let people not smoke because of her. After finishing speaking, she said to Chen Ran, didn't I see you smoking last time? Sister, don't pay attention, Chen Ran treats women like this, serious. Ji Huijin said while stepping on the cigarette, actually, he is a beast in private, you usually stay away from him. Woman. Cheng Yin heard the words, the brown sugar glutinous rice cake she took a bite suddenly fell into the bowl, and her face could not wait to be buried in the bowl with the glutinous rice cake. Chen Ran raised his eyes and looked at Ji Huijin lightly, why am I beastly to you? A group of big men burst into laughter. 
maybe the atmosphere in the box was hot, or maybe he was thinking about joking with his friends, and his expression was extraordinarily relaxed. I didn't catch a glimpse of Cheng Yin's face as red as an apple until he was drinking tea. Chen Ran frowned secretly, put down the teacup, and changed the topic. Zhang Yu, didn't you say you want to change jobs to Shanghai? Zhang Yu simmered the beef, shook his head and said, I fold my waist for five buckets of rice. The boss knows that I want to leave. Doesn't this give me a promotion immediately? Next, most of the topics they talked about were incomprehensible to Cheng Yin, but they also deliberately avoided some topics that were not suitable for children. It was only occasionally that someone would subconsciously speak out some swear words. People care. It's just that Cheng Yin had a very reserved and quiet meal. Chen Ran glanced at her during the dinner and saw that she was eating a piece of watermelon in small bites, like a kitten licking cat food. This girl is arrogant and charming in school, and when I meet a big man at a table, she is still silent. After dinner, Chen Ran wants to send Cheng Yin home. When the two walked out of the box, Ji Huijin chased after them, stood at the door and said, Chen Ran, see you at the old place after you send your sister home, we'll be over now. Chen Ran didn't look back, and snapped his fingers to show that he knew. Every weekend, they get together for a meal, and their evening pastime is to go for a drink or two. After getting in the car, Cheng Yin opened the window, the evening breeze was blowing, chewing the tangerine peel from the hot pot restaurant, and took out his mobile phone to watch the anime. The car was full of exaggerated shouts and noisy soundtracks by CEU, Chen Ran had not heard such a thing for a long time. Hello, little roommate. Cheng Yin didn't look up, hi. Hey. Don't get into a man's car in the future, and go to dinner with others, even acquaintances, you know. He turned his head slightly and looked at Cheng Yin, do you know how dangerous you are? Cheng Yin didn't take it too seriously, she lowered her head and continued to look at her phone, you said you wanted to feed me. Isn't that angered by you? Chen Ran stretched out her hand to take her mobile phone and put it on the storage space, to tell you the seriousness. Never rule out the danger of adult men, such as me, although I know you, but you can't follow people casually, let alone those who are unfamiliar, do you hear? Cheng Yin looked at him blankly, like you. Chen Ran opened his mouth and wanted to continue to reason with her, but she heard her say, because you are a beast. Chen Ran, he stepped on the gas pedal. I'm here to tell you the truth, and you attack me personally. No fun. Cheng Yin realized that she was about to say something wrong, so she quietly tugged at the corner of his shirt and whispered, I see. Chen Ran heard it, but said nothing. The road was built in front of me, and it was surrounded. The two-way street became a one-way street, and it was blocked. Chen Ran had to change lanes and squeezed with others. At this time, Ji Huijin's phone call came again telling him to change places, and urging him to hurry up. Chen Ran simply replied, Well, just come when you send people home, don't rush, what's the hurry, you guys play first, don't wait for me. After hanging up the phone, Chen Ran was obviously still a little anxious, and pressed the horn twice to urge the driver in front to turn around. Cheng Yin heard the call he just answered, so he asked, Are you going to play in a while? Chen Ran made a hum. Oh, that's great, I've never been out after ten o'clock at night. Cheng Yin played with her ponytail, lowered her head and muttered, Where are you going to play? Chen Ran held the steering wheel and looked at the long dragon blocked in front of him, feeling a little irritable. He turned his head and saw the little girl beside him playing with braids, with an innocent face. It seems that he really didn't take what he just said to heart. He looked down at Cheng Yin, from this angle, he saw his eyes slightly raised, like peach blossom eyes, the neon lights on the roadside and the car lights complemented each other in his eyes, blurring his eyes, it was true only the inconspicuous curvature of the corner of his mouth made Cheng Yin think of the word temptation for no reason. What do you think we adult men can do when they are full and drunk? You gather together. Cheng Yin cautiously probed 
whoring prostitutes. Chen Ran. The author has something to say the pretty boy is speechless, the pretty boy has few words, and the pretty boy has few words in the spiral leap. Today there are also 100 small red packets thanks to the little angel who voted for me or irrigated the nutrient solution thanks to the little angel who cast landmine, Yunsu I.2, thanks to the little angel who irrigated nutrient solution, 10 bottles of citrus and sweet orange, 6 bottles of serendipity, 1 bottle of DJFJD, ZZZ, noodles.